couple years ago. Live in Nashville, Tennessee. You are listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. Nashville's number one daily podcast. Brought to you by Think Nashville. Think Nashville. Think Brad. Think Brad. It's Nashville Daily Podcast. Good morning, Nashville. We're just vibing out to this radio sweeper. We're all like just head banging over here. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by thinkbrad.com. If you're looking for real estate here in Middle Tennessee, you need to contact Brad Reynolds, 615 856 3270. Text him right now the longest hashtag possible about going into spring like weather today. High of 78. Oh, I can't wait. It's a break in a record. It's um, a break in a record. It's a break in a record. You can hear Aaron on the mic as well. And joining us today, we had him on episode 611, way back in the day, like 400 and some episodes ago. Yep. Justin Siegel. What's up, man? What's up, guys? It's been, it's, be been, it's been a hot minute. You're the first episode, uh, and I remember this clearly. You're telling a story, and you're, you're an artist, and uh, we'll, we'll get into that here in a second, but you're telling a story of how you gave this painting to this family, and that was like one of the first episodes like I actually like cried after. So You shed a tear? I shed a tear. Yeah, <gasps> I, did. I, I did. I didn't think you got emotion, Stuart. I, uh, I do. Aaron, Aaron, <laughs> has, yeah, Aaron, yeah. Aaron has seen I, my I, I'm a robot. <laughs> I'm I am Are you for real? I, I'm the robot. Stoic. Yeah. Yeah. Just, we, just, we, had just a, <laughs> we had a situation that happened last week and I'm just like about to break my window in the car. Stuart, no. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. like delayed reaction yeah, with yeah. my emotions. Oh, oh, you guys it'll, it'll, it'll it'll process. Yeah. You're <laughs> like in the, you're like in your bed and you're like, Oh, I'm angry. <laughs> Like hit you twelve hours yeah. after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not good. It's yeah. Not good. <laughs> so, so Justin, you uh, you came on episode six eleven, and uh, you were one of our first interviews in this in this studio. First, first. Are you serious? Video, video interviews. interviews. Yes. You you were in like the first like five. I didn't know how privileged I was. To yes. to date, I think it is one of the one of the better looking episodes that we've well, done, done. That I'm we've on it. done. Yeah. it it's the, it's the yeah. whole package <laughs> it, it was it was it was pretty cool um so we're gonna try to top it today yes uh well, it's a, a lot of a lot of new things <laughs> to talk about it's a whole different experience walking in it is yeah we have uh better cameras than last time we have it's just a better what were you rocking yeah. last time was it the, the sony sony six thousand yeah buddy now you got the black <laughs> magics yeah yeah those things are nice we uh we upgraded yeah uh, a big time so, Justin, tell us a little bit about yourself. You are a, I, a I human the, yeah, of the yeah, bean variety. I, and I want to get to – tell us a little bit about yourself so the audience can get familiar with you. And then I want to go back to, after that, episode 611 and who Justin was then. And who you oh, are. And, no. then, and, then, oh, and, then, no. and then what what has happened since then because I'm sure, like, it has probably been an amazing and wild ride since then because I think the coolest thing is everybody two years ago – was in a state of just unknown. What's next? And then here you go. Two years later, you're able to see: was I right? Was I wrong? Like what? And, and reflect on those things. So we'll, we'll get mm. to that. But who who is Justin Siegel? What is what is the art side of you? What is the side of you that uh, is is on TikTok and Instagram? And and what do you like to do? This feels so existential for some reason. Um, you know we got to bring it. Yeah, yeah I know. You're, you're I know. Anytime. I uh. Who is Justin Siegel? I, I guess right now Justin Siegel's figuring out what he wants to do with his life. <laughs> and and that's like a perpetual cycle. But um, right now it is pursuing art full time still. I've been doing that for the past year and a half. Um, and then aside from that, figuring out the different avenues of what that means on social media, what that means off of social media, um, traveling a bit, doing artwork live. So. Um, there's a lot of different facets, um, exploring my faith outside of that and within the art field. Um, so there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff can to you, unpack. Can you tell one of our listeners like what type of art do you really specialize? Only in? one of them. Yeah, yeah just, only one. Just one. <laughs> um, if Maybe you're everybody else close your ears. The live <laughs> painting. Yeah, just one. Uh, a guy named Bill. Okay. <laughs> this is for you, Nick Zuman. <laughs> hey, Bill. Uh, the kind of artwork that I do is. Um, how do I describe it? I feel like you could describe it better than I could. Okay. I would say you are... This is going to be by, by, by trade, you are a live performance painter. Mm. 
uh, where you go to different events and you paint, like you quick paint, and I don't know if that's what the terminology is, uh, but you take like a, a painting of potentially Jesus or of a character and you could paint it in front of a live audience. And so there's like a storytelling aspect to that. On social media, you're just an incredible, incredible painter that's in, painting these portraits and these caricatures and uh, your Christmas series has been remarkable the last few years. Uh, so I, I would just say you're just an very incredible, I think it, it would be classified as a painter. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I think, Aaron, I think you, you hit say? it on the head. I would say that one of the differences that I can notice and what stands out with your work from other people, um, the style, everybody's going to have a different style, but yours are, and I don't know the term for it, but large scale, um, kind of characters large scale um they're not necessarily portraits because i would define a portrait as like of a real life person and you bring a lot of characters to life in there um but the, the but you large have done portraits too oh yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 the the large scale and the quickness in which you paint them um, I think separates out what you do. Okay. Now, I don't know how you describe those okay, things, a, a, but those a, are the things that stand out painter. to me. Yeah. I don't know if that's actually termed. Speed, speed, speed painter pain. is definitely a term. Also, okay. am I talking into this mic correctly? There we go. Um, speed painter is definitely a term. I I describe what I do as performance painting. So, yeah. okay. Um, speed painting, to me, the difference between that and performance painting, speed painting is just painting fast, like getting the image to be recognizable in the quickest amount of time possible. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily on that degree. I would much rather perform the painting in a way that's engaging with music behind me. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the storytelling fast movements, aspect. The storytelling yes. aspect, yeah. exactly. Um, whether that's a voiceover, a song, whatever. Um, and that's the live aspect. It's quick, but it's not as quick as it could be because there's more dramatization behind it. Mm -hmm. Um for the storytelling aspect. And then, yeah, social media, I get to take my time a bit. And by take my time, I mean, like, an hour, hour and a half. For for one painting. Yeah, for, and, and for a painting. And that's with filming yourself doing that one painting. Yeah. Right? So you could probably cut that time by, like, 25% if you didn't have to film it. That's fair. Yeah, if I didn't have to think. Maybe about even 40%. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have to think about how. Uh. Man, I think we talked about this last time. Is the art piece the art piece, or is the art piece the video when I'm done with it? Yes. I think it's both. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's both. <laughs> um, so if I didn't have to think about how the video was going to be, then all I had to focus on was um, the painting, and, and it would probably it's, would go quicker. It is artception. Or slower. I've taken a step back from painting live on social media. I was doing a lot of TikTok lives while mm -hmm. I was painting. Mm. And um, I don't have to do that as much anymore, or I don't. I don't do it as much anymore because yeah. I don't want to. Um, I, I found a lot of freedom in just having the creative process be isolated and yeah, then yeah. me release what part of it I want to Yep. Um, for social media. And I've actually been able to take longer on paintings, I think, because there's no audience that is waiting on me to finish the painting. Do yep. you like doing that more? Oh, Being I love able it. to spend more time on the details? Yeah, I do. Uh, it, so it depends on what kind of painting I'm doing. Sure. If it's... um. If it's an original piece, I love taking my time on it. If it's a pop portrait or a celebrity or an anime painting, which has become very popular in, in my world, um, I I love doing those a bit quicker um, just because I don't – there's not as much heart behind those. Have you seen uh, – because you, you, you just said there's a little bit of shift in what maybe people are looking for and mm -hmm. requesting. What kind of shifts have you seen as people have discovered your style maybe here over the past, uh, you know, little bit? What kind of what kind of changes in like requests or people that are are looking for and just like, oh, cool, he does this. Can he do this? What what kind of requests are you seeing now that are different than when you first started? Anime, anime, strictly <laughs> anime. Like, yeah, for real. That that crowd is feral, and I love them. <laughs> and I'm a fan of anime myself. Um, has has it gotten you into it like more into like the culture and everything? Oh yeah, there's there's certain um, anime shows that I was not aware of until people started okay. requesting characters. That's uh, the anime and sports are things I do not know. I know uh, I know I Dragon Ball Z. That's the only. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I know that's not technically anime. Pokemon. 
I used to yeah. watch Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Gundam. Yeah, I never watched it. Okay. Um, I was thinking of all like the. Do you remember Tsunami? The like Cartoon yes. Network yes. After Dark yes. yeah, situation. Yeah. Yeah, I watched Pokemon. I watched Dragon Ball Z. Was the only like, I mean, I think it's anime, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I've ever watched all the way through. Did There's. You, did you find yourself like a brand new fan base just from the anime side of things? I did. So it's crazy. I. This is part of what I'm doing currently. Um, I really dissected when I got my biggest pieces of my audience. Um, so 1.5 million currently. Um, and I can, I can derive three different audiences from that. There's the initial audiences that started following me because of um, painting people like Robin Williams and Kobe and Jesus and um, connecting with some of the families that we talked about before. Mm-hmm. There's that initial following. There is the Wreck This Journal following. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, this. Yeah, 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 I, remember, yeah, yeah. I remember the series. That series was insane. It was, like, yeah. very Casey Neistat-esque. Yes. The way yes. I was yes. editing it. And it was it was a lot of fun. I loved it. I don't. How did that thing survive? Uh, did you, I don't, did you I have, have multiple it. journals, or was that truly just one, one journal? journal? Yeah, that I just I kept questioned, doctoring I questioned it up. that at times. So I was fair. like, there's no way that that thing's still going. It, it went through <laughs> hell and back. It did was, you ever lit it on fire? Huh? Didn't you light the one page on fire? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. I did. I wanted to burn the whole thing as like a finale, yeah, and then yeah. and it did <laughs> my, burn. my ADHD got a hold of me, and oh. I stopped the project. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like a caveat of artists. We we start something, we have we have a track on it, and it becomes our obsession, and then we get a new obsession. We abandon that project. And yeah. That's what happened to the wreck this journal. Oh, so but I got a big following from that. You wrecked that, that, wreck that project. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or maybe, just, maybe that was part of the buried the it in the grave. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, and then the anime following. So it's like I can divide my audience into those three categories. And the anime audience, I think, has has the biggest hold or is the biggest percentage of that. Um, they're, they're the ones that are right now. They're the most active. They're commenting. They're the most they're active. They're sharing. requesting their favorite characters, which I, I adore that. And I want to do more of it. Um but I've I've also found that it has been to my detriment since gaining that audience. Doing original work does not do as well anymore. So you have to have on a separate account. Page. So I have to have multiple accounts. Yep. Welcome to the what? world. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So so you have uh, Justin Siegel Arts, which is more recognizable Correct. characters, and then so you've split off from that to I the originals. Split. What is that page? Yeah, I have three original accounts now. So whoa. Um, the way I'm doing it is it, you. I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. You know how, like, uh, BuzzFeed, for example, they'll share things from um, Tasty. Yeah, and, which they own. You know, other things yeah, that yeah. they own. Yeah. I'm kind of using Seagull Arts as my BuzzFeed account. Cool. And then these other three accounts will be their own separate things. So the Undead Artist, um, I think it's just un.dead underscore artist. Um, undead Artist, that's where I'll post my anime stuff. Okay. Um, Justin the Painter, which is my my original work. Yes. yes. And then Chaotic Cocktails. I've started a cocktail Ooh. page. You so started a cocktail page? Y- yeah. Are you painting cocktails or are you making no, cocktails? No, I'm, I'm making cocktails. So that wow. was that was a you hobby. You should be painting cocktails, too. Painting. Why drinking paint, your own painting cocktails? Painting the cocktails that I, you make. I've thought about like, doing like a series. The, uh, like the, uh, the people who do the wine and yeah, the yeah. sips and strokes, but you're but it's <laughs> it's, it's you're, you're painting the cocktails yeah. and you're making them. <laughs> That's actually a really good idea, because <laughs> um, I I have my own studio space starting in in March Dude, outside of awesome, my house. Man. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. I know I, I know for a while you were looking for a space. For that's at um, least space, a year. Space is not it's easy not to easy come, come by in no. this uh, even the greater Nashville area. Space space is easy to come by. Affordable space that you can wreck at will. That's hard to come by. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I finally found a space that opened up in September. And so, um, yeah, I have I have studio space. Anyway, it would be cool because now I can invite people into my studio and not be inviting them into my house. Dude, that's, so, yeah, that's yeah, awesome, yeah, And that's huge. That's <laughs> awesome, dude. That's and so you exciting. And some more space inside. I do, exactly. And I'm not huffing fumes every two days, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 with yeah. spray paint and whatnot. So that's going to be beneficial. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So, but, no, I make, I make drinks on the cocktail page, um, and it – it's a hobby that I gained during quarantine, but um, I wasn't wasn't able to talk about it before because of my line of work. 
yep. um, at that point in time. But I love it. It's it's just a different avenue for my creativity. People talk about sa- shadow passions yeah, yeah. outside of what you mainly mm-hmm. do, and that's become my shadow passion. Like I'm not I'm not worried about growing it all that much. I have 10.5k currently, um, but that's without me trying. Yeah, yeah. It's that's like amazing. I just I make the content. The videos are very quick and easy. I use the script to cut them yep. um, very quickly, and then just post them and have fun with it, man. Yeah. So the, uh, I had a cocktail last night at uh, the Chef and I. Ooh. And it's called Wild Horses, and it's this peanut butter whiskey cinnamon combination, and it's one. I think it's my favorite. That's why signature artisan <laughs> cocktail in Nashville. Yeah. I, him uh, and Aaron uh, and I don't like the word signature. It's signature cocktails. cocktails. It's on it every just, menu. It's like uh, it's on every creative menu now, space. So. Yeah, yeah, like creative, creative, creative office creative, space. Creative, creative office space. It's just space. an empty warehouse. But that, oh my god, <laughs> but that, <laughs> yeah, but that, right. co- that cocktail is fantastic. So tell me one of your favorite cocktails that you've made. Oh my gosh. Okay, so like original recipe or yeah, original recipe. Jeez, um, I made one. It's a riff of God. What's the original cocktail that it's the riff of? Um, the artist special. And I named it the Van Gogh Special because I added a little bit of absinthe to it. Um, it's got sherry in it, so it's mm-hmm. got like that that funkiness um, that a fortified wine will give a cocktail. I adore it. It's really, really good. Um, mm. I want to say it's gin-based. Gin and cognac. But yeah, um, I have a couple originals. I made one for Valentine's Day called The Sexy Baby. <laughs> um and so it's got lavender. It's got a rose lavender syrup, Ooh. lavender bitters, gin. Um, what else is in there? Lemon juice, egg white, and then rose petals on top. So nice. Wow. Yeah, dude. It's classic. Yeah, I want to. I may <laughs> go watch that TikTok now. <laughs> that's that's my favorite floral one. Um, there's also a cocktail called the Martinez. Um, it's in line with like a like a Manhattan okay. martini situation. Very yeah. spirit forward. Um, and I subbed out. It's a gin cocktail, and I subbed that out for rye whiskey. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. it's one of my favorite cocktails to make. Mm, huh. That sounds awesome. Is that on yeah. your page? Yeah, it is. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay, so w- one of the things, just to break out from from that, because you know, well, I think one of the cool things is you're in a space where you are now able to follow those. What do, did you call them? Shadow passions? What did you yeah. call them? Yeah. You're able to follow those because you pursued something that when we had you on the show, you were like, I'm about to make this leap. Yeah. Uh, talk about how you see that now. Uh, that I feel that so disrespectful. Leap. Should I be using this coaster? No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we had barbecue on this <laughs> table yesterday. Yeah. We, 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 had a, we, had a, we had a spread. We had burnt yeah. ends and pulled pork. And yeah. 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 So, so talk about how do you look at that transition now, a year and a half later, um, now that you are, you know, kind of putting that out there, proclaiming, like, hey, I'm going to make this step. You know, I think it's going to work out, but you never know until you make it. Talk about that decision and how it's going now. Yeah. Uh, the decision was scary. I didn't know if it was going to work. Um, I was working for a church as a communications director, which I had talked about before. Um, I don't know if I said I was working for a church or not. You um, did. I, yeah, I don't yeah. know if yeah, I was yeah. trying to keep that on the low. You low. did. But I was working for a church as a communications director in Murfreesboro, um, which I had that job since February of 2018 and learned a lot. Um, it taught me how to use a camera, which has benefited me greatly. Um, for all of all of the content that I've been creating, and that's typical. Is most <laughs> yeah. most videographers it, learn in well, the church world? Well, if it wasn't for the yeah. church world, I, I think you wouldn't have the, the audio the, people the that amount you have of, here. Yeah, the amount of creatives true. would not be as high for sure. No, yeah. So um, I was doing church work, and in November of 2021, I finally made the jump because through that whole year, from I'd say October of 2020 through October 2021, things just kept getting better on the art side of things. And I finally got to the point where I was like, um, when was that? I'd say it was in the middle of the year. So it was June. The middle of COVID year? In 2021. So in the middle of 2021. June of 21. That's right. Because it's 2023 now. I kind of forget that. Yeah. I had been making enough the past six months where I was able to sustain myself. Um, and so I was like, okay, I think I've hit a plateau. I'm giving 40 plus hours of my time and energy to this organization that I don't 
quite align with anymore um faith wise but also just passion wise i'm i'm out of it they can benefit a lot more from having somebody who's passionate about being a communications director and i would benefit a lot more by giving my 100 percent to my artwork and so i did it um i made the leap and i was i was really scared but i gave them until october 31st and that's crazy because during October is when the anime stuff started kicking off. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. When I started painting anime characters as skeletons. Um, and I just started growing exponentially. I got more sales than I knew how to handle. Wow. Because I was I was ordering all the prints. I was um, rolling them up, packing them, shipping them mm-hmm. all myself. And I was like, I don't know that I can do this, man. <laughs> this is, it's insane. But, like, I was able to sustain myself on it. So um, that was cool. And I feel like any small business owner knows this, and I feel like you guys knows that know this. There's there's times where it works. There's times where you're making a lot of money, and, and then there's times where you don't make money for three months. And exactly. So yes. I've learned to save when things are good. We understand that very <laughs> well. Uh huh. <laughs> and just live off of ramen noodles most of the time. <laughs> um, as I'm drinking my big box coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your big five dollar coffee. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But yeah, man. So it's it's definitely been a journey, and I've learned I've learned a lot. I've learned. I saw a TikTok a couple of days ago of this guy talking. He goes, "You have a tradesman that wants to be full time painter, right?" And um, he's like, "But that tradesman needs to decide if he wants to be a tradesman, if he wants to do the craft, or if he wants to be a businessman, mm-hmm. because that's what's what it's going to take." And that's definitely what I've learned. Yeah, it. I had to learn the business side of things and you're still learning and i'm still learning yeah the, the, every that does, freaking day i'm that learning doesn't, yeah you you can you can take in as much information as you want mm-hmm. you're still going to be learning about business mm-hmm. every day yeah just wait until you get into the tax and, and, and the, oh I'm, I'm there <laughs> and the interesting thing is a lot of times on these kind of endeavors where artists are uh creating self-sustaining lifestyles through that you get to the business side of things and for a lot of people, it's art and business are just so different. And and you're like, okay, I'm spending more time business than art. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you have to, that takes a long time to say, okay, do I like the business? Do I like just the art? So how do you, do you plan on saying, Justin Siegel is going to continue to be businessman Justin Siegel and art man Justin Siegel or do you like I'm going to stay on the art side as much as possible and then when you get to a point like hire a business manager. hire hire people to handle the business side yeah that's the goal um the the more I can be in the studio and the less I have to worry about the logistics of things yep great um I don't want it <laughs> I really <laughs> don't I think you're it, like I, I I saw the business side not for me don't like it. No, nah, I, I saw it. I know how to do it. Um, I am not the best at it. And so um, I have people who have helped me to learn how to manage my finances, to manage all the logistics of things. Mm-hmm. I've learned about SEO. I've learned about e-commerce. Um, and so I'm, I'm learning all these things. And I think that's fan-freaking-tastic. But I don't want to be there the rest of my life. I want to be in the studio as much time as possible. So I think learning it as an artist is very beneficial um because if there's ever a point down the road where i'm not able to pass that off to somebody else Mm -hmm. i need to be able to manage it still um but i do think if if you can grow yourself to the point where you can then pass that off you're going to grow exponentially because then you're producing more content you're producing more art and that continues to grow, and then you have people who that's their bread and butter is doing the business stuff, mm-hmm. um, doing what they love, doing what they're passionate about. You're feeding their passions. You're feeding your passions. You're feeding the world inspiration, and then it's just it's ten times better that way. So um, I think the closer I can get myself to not being the business guy, the better. Well, uh, speaking of feeding, we, we need to talk about uh, Nashville uh, food and Murfreesboro food. I know the food scene <laughs> in Murfreesboro yeah. is way different than Nashville. So what's f- a few of your favorite places in Murfreesboro? And then we're going to come to Nashville and talk about the best places in Nashville. Cool. I like this. Um, I I feel like Murfreesboro is mostly 
chain restaurants. Yes. Yes. That's the nice way of saying it. Yes. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think there, there, just, there are a couple good pockets. Yeah, you can't make good coffee with just love. That's a hot take. Um, Ooh. Are you talking about with their beans? What, or what about their beans? Uh, do, are you saying that you can't make good a coffee at home? Or are you making their beans? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Just love, just Any, love it, coffee in Murfreesboro. Do you like yeah. them or not? No, I don't like them. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we can we can put that on the record too. I'm fine with that. Um, I liked them when I first got to Murfreesboro. Why? Do I feel like there we go. There's like one sweet spot in this microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I gotta be like them. right here. Oh, that is sexy. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I don't like just love coffee. Uh, is it? Is it? It, it was the only roaster i want to say in murfreesboro when i first got there yeah yeah now there's like two or three i think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um brass horn shout out to brass horn Ooh, never heard of them they are fantastic i'll have to check them out i love them uh so there was a there was a thing during the first half of february up through valentine's day it was called the hearts um coffee walk or something like that okay. you know like an art walk except yeah, the coffee yeah, walk yeah, yeah. and um, it's 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 not a crawl because you have caffeine, so you can't oh walk. coffee crawl yeah. yeah yeah that is what it was called oh dang man. it I was hoping that they would like because you have caffeine they're you s- have to you're walk. speeding it up yeah yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's the past, coffee it's run. past a crawl but it's yeah. it, but it's like a mall walk you know yeah, yeah. it's not like <laughs> so um every one of the participating uh, coffee shops had a special latte for the month of February oh, that's um, cool and Brasshorn was the only one nearby like where I live yeah yeah that was participating. So they had a violet rose latte that was pretty delicious. That sounds mm. amazing. Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah. Um, are there any local restaurants that you really enjoy down there? There's a poke place. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I just call it the poke place. Yeah, and that's probably what I it's can called. Walk, yeah. I can walk to it. Um, <laughs> oh, that, now that's nice. Yeah. And then Oishia Sushi is, uh, I want to say it's family owned. Um I would put their sushi against anything I've had in Nashville. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. I think that's pretty much it. I think. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about Nashville restaurants. Yeah, I know it's a whole buddy. different it's a whole different world. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh It's crazy it, what it, 40 miles can do. Yeah. Do you have something crazy. that sticks out to you here? <clears throat> um as far as food goes, grays, I I have a lot of allergies. Um I have alpha gal allergy which is where I'm allergic to anything with a hoof and their derivatives. So like yeah, oh yeah, so you can only eat chicken. milk, I cheese, I can't have I can have I can have cream cheese if it's baked out, if the dairy is baked out, I can have it. Interesting. Like cakes and whatnot. Um, but I can't have anything with a hoof. That has caused me to go vegan multiple times and yeah. also love vegan alternatives. What is it with the hoof? What is it with the hoof? Yeah. Uh, so the alpha gal I want to say sugar molecule that's found in higher level mammals or lower level mammals. Sorry, so, it's not so, found in us. So, that's why so I'm not allergic to my own BS. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so, all, so animals with these hooves primarily contain those specific molecules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and so that's why I can't have their milk either because it's found in in their milk. Hmm. So no goat milk. No regular milk, no nothing like that. I can have the milk of the oat, just not the goat. <laughs> and um, but yeah, so Gray's is a vegan restaurant that I really love down here. Okay. Um, I have friends that I've taken there that love barbecue. They love meat and they love food at Gray's. So, um, love me some Gray's. I'm trying to think of some other places that are go tos. I am a hoe for donuts. There's a lot of good donut places yeah, here. Yeah, East Park is probably my favorite. Their brown butter donut. Never had it. Phenomenal. Are you serious? Yeah, I've never You've had You've never it. had their brown butter donut. No, I've only uh, had East Park once. Dog. We, that was when we, we filmed, filmed the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I, oh, you filmed the video for we, them? We filmed yeah, the video. Well, our for t- them, we did a Top Donuts top video. Donuts, but two of the restaurants were closed. Nashville. And yeah. East Park had a car run through there. Yeah, like front right doors. After. I, I think they're yeah. all fixed up now, okay. but this is about a year ago or so. Dog, they couldn't catch a break. They had... It was the tornado that happened yep, right the before COVID, then COVID, then the car. And then wasn't there a robbery, too? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of robberies there. Yeah. That's East Nashville so for you. That's it, a it's just, it's, very yeah, East Nashville, Nashville situation. Have, have you been to um, Sunflower Bakery in Donaldson? Uh-uh. Oh, dude, this is a vegan place. Okay. 
Uh, they have this like buffalo chicken chickpea salad, or buffalo chickpea salad. Dude, it's phenomenal. Uh, and then they also do completely vegan and gluten free cupcakes that are like this. They're monsters. Uh, but they're delicious. I didn't, know, I didn't know if this meant like they were just long cupcakes. No, no. That's like no, what, that's like what Dwight Schrute in yeah. the office goes. I could have grown mushrooms that are this high right now, and it's like <laughs> right. At the, it's like it's like a centimeter out of. The um, but dude, it's in Donaldson's, right? Like almost across the street from Caliber Coffee. Like it's it's oh, okay. awesome. And while you're here, you probably should go over that way. I'll say we're on the Donaldson side. Aren't we? We're uh-huh. very yeah, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will have to check that out. And I'm definitely going by East Park before I go home. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, how I'm like salivating. <laughs> how how often are you driving to Nashville? Once a week. Once a once a week at this point. Okay. Which moves me to I'm moving soon because I'm I'm here more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm spending more in gas than I would in rent. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> where where is your studio going to be? Uh, it's on the side of town. Actually, really, yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Okay, so your studio is not e- not in, in the Murphy, borough, not in the borough. It's here in Nashville. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. it's not in the borough. So I could see why you'd want to be closer to your studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to be close to my studio. I also want to be close to um, most of my people are down here. Yeah. Most of um, the people I interact with on a weekly, daily basis mm-hmm. are in Nashville instead of Murfreesboro at this point. Which makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, when I worked for the church, all my people were in Murfreesboro, but. Um, even people that I connected with there have moved to Nashville since then. Okay. Mm. So it's just I'm trying to get I'm trying to get here. <laughs> I'm trying dude. to get here. <laughs> I'm trying to get here. Very soon. Yeah. Very soon. That's awesome. Um, I, I I do have a question. I think is very interesting for uh somebody who's producing a lot, such as yourself. What is what's one thing that you think over the past maybe year and a half post move? Uh, out of you know, going to church work and doing full time in the art. What, what's one thing you think that you've done outside of that that has just tremendously improved either your life or your workflow or something that you're like, man, this this thing really changed something for me. And it may be you know getting a studio or something like that. But wh- what's one thing that you think has had a great impact on? your work and your life in the past year and a half. This is going to sound so stupid. I have a couple things that came to mind, but this is probably the biggest. I started eating breakfast. Interesting. Dog, I started eating breakfast. <laughs> I have um, since, well, since 2020 and before that, but mainly 2020, um, I had heightened levels of anxiety for years. And I was like, I I have tools to manage this. I know that I can regulate myself, but it's just, it was getting to the point where I was having panic attacks on a pretty regular basis, Mm. and I was sick of it. Um, Part of that was me going from, even though I was working in an environment that I was not happy with, I was still around people. And leaving that environment and isolating myself, I wake up, I'm alone. I go to work, which is my house. I'm alone. Um, I go and work out. Maybe there's people to talk to. Maybe there's not. Mm -hmm. I come home. I'm alone. So it was just like this perpetual state of being isolated, which as an artist, I love too much of it. Not good for my mental health. It's not good for anybody. No. Um, You need people to regulate your nervous system. We talk a lot about uh, this is getting into mental health stuff now. Um, people talk a lot about regulating your own nervous system and I think that's very good for you to be able to do so to regulate your emotions but um, we're finding out through the research that I have so back me up on this Nick (laughs) um, (laughs) that it it takes pretty much a community of people to um, truly regulate you and like I we all came from a Christian background. I think this is the one of the things that I kept from my Christian background is community is key to thriving. Um, anyway, so part of part of fixing the anxiety problem was getting social every day, getting some sort of social experience every single day, um, making friends at the gym, even if I didn't want to, right? Like going without headphones. That way I can't isolate mm. myself when I'm there. Um, scheduling coffee dates throughout the week with people that I'm friends with. 
Um, but the biggest kicker was eating a breakfast that was high in fat, high in protein. Yep. So eating four eggs every morning and delaying my coffee intake. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, because if, if you're just drinking coffee and not well, that's what I was doing. Breakfast like th- that's. Yeah, I've I've ooh. been I've been up since five this morning and haven't <laughs> had a cup of coffee yet. Yeah, really. Yeah, and I have. What's in the cup, sir? Very high <laughs> energy. It's empty. It was longer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I I used to drink coffee first thing in the morning, and I would not eat until two p.m. I would interesting. I would do intramural fasting. Yeah, in, in, intramural, intramural sports, intermittent fasting. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the college fasting. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I would delay my food intake, um, drink coffee, and I don't know much about the science about it. So what I'm saying is probably wrong, Nick. <laughs> um, but I, I think what happens is your cortisol levels like mm-hmm. s- spike. Um, and then of course, like that increases your heart rate mm-hmm. and you get those feelings of anxiety and yeah, then and coffee, co- me coffee definitely exacerbates feelings of anxiety without yeah. proper, you know, other balance, like a lot of water intake and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys watch the and- Andrew Huberman podcast? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. no. Okay. He's a nerd. I've never even heard of the guy. He's a neuroscientist. Are you serious? Okay. Yeah. You for real? I'm dead serious. Dang. Okay. Hey, it's a good podcast. Oh, there you go. Good podcast. You're, you're teaching us now. Um, Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist. And one of the things he talked about with coffee is if you delay that intake, you. Well, let me back up. If you drink coffee first thing in the morning, or within the first hour, hour and a half of you waking up, you delay your wake up cycle. Mm. So when you get that crash a couple hours later, that's actually your body going back to the morning and trying to wake itself up, going through the wake up cycle. Interesting. So if you allow yourself to go through that full wake up cycle before you drink coffee, how long is you that? You are not going to get it's that crash. An hour, 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 hour and a half, half okay. depending on who you are. Sure. Um, and it depends on a lot of metabolic yeah maybe stuff uh, as well. how you yeah, slept yeah, yeah. what you did the day before yeah. but yeah yeah yes. results may vary yeah, yeah exactly so i i give myself an hour and a half just to optimize that hour and a half to two hours um but what you do is like you don't experience that crash after your first cup of coffee mm. um and so it's just kind of a slow fall off as the caffeine wears down sure you Crazy. also never experience a crash if you just Keep the intake of coffee going. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is shout out to Blessed Day Coffee. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of our sponsors. <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, we do have to talk about our sponsor, Bowtie Barber Club in Donaldson. If you're looking for a haircut, make sure to get your haircuts at bowtiebarberclub.com. That's where I get my nose wax, my ears wax, and my eyebrows wax. And I want to see Justin's face <laughs> when I said that because I do. No, that's great. I I bought a wax pot maybe three years ago, and I've been waxing my nostrils ever since myself. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Dude, it feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you do like <laughs> I, We have so videos of, of Stuart on the Instagram. Oh, slow-mo, nice slow-mo videos. Do you, on, do the you like on the Instagram. It's yeah. On the Instagram. Um, and it's it, th- is it the kind <laughs> where you like, you know, put the wax in and then you just rip it out mm-hmm. like super fast? Yeah. What, were you scared to do it the first time? Absolutely, I was. And I made the mistake of using Q-tips. So Ooh, that's not um, good. That is not good. <laughs> one, one came out clean. The yep. next one came out, and the fuzz was left behind uh, with all the wax. wax. All of that. I had yeah. to get tw- I had to get tweezers to like and really grip it, and it came out in pieces. Oh, oh, it was yeah. awful. <laughs> that one's the worst. It sucked, man. <laughs> it sucked. And then um, <laughs> I actually, my sister and her fiance came and visited me, and uh, he's a pretty hairy dude. And so I was like, <laughs> "Let's wax your nostrils," <laughs> and um, we did. And the same thing happened with him. Uh, like God dang it, because I didn't have any. Yeah, I didn't have uh, the wood sticks. Yeah, you need to get rid of the Q-tips. <laughs> I have. I have. I've learned. They're terrible for your ears. I know. I still for use them. The, the only thing you're supposed <laughs> to use Q-tips for is like cleaning, like yeah, like makeup wounds. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody does that. Yeah, you may. Does you, you may, but I, I still well, clean my ears. My, bro, I need to. <laughs> my, my doctor's like, you have too much earwax. Stop using Q-tips. Uh, what will do you use the gun? No, I want. I want to get about that. So I, I shouldn't have done that. I should use the gun. Yeah, use the gun. <laughs> yeah. <it's a> <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, so I get my ears cleaned, like, once a year from the doctor. <laughs> I know this is too okay, much. Okay, no, 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 that's not too much. But they have, like, they have this, this is, like, little device. It's a silver thing. It has this long, like, needle in it, and they shove it into your ear. And it's <laughs> like the gun. 
But then you hear Jeez. like the wax moving around in your. It's a really weird experience. The, no, that's fantastic. <laughs> Once a year, there's a like a burning candle that you can like hold mm. to your ear oh, yeah, and it like yeah, yeah. suctions I used to, I used out to the wax. I used to wax. do that too, but it smells so. Well, there's bad. a there's a there's a theory <laughs> behind that because my mom my mom works for a chiropractor, and so we would do that when we were younger. And she would like cut a hole in a paper plate, uh-huh. put the candle in there, have us lay on our side, and put the candle in our ear. Yeah. And apparently, it was drawing out the wax through like a vacuum method yeah. into the smoke and stuff. Yeah. Apparently, there's wax on the inside of those candles. That's so as it burns down, it just collects at the bottom. That's yes. what I've seen. But also, I I know that it works in some capacity because I remember the first time that I did it, it cleaned out my ear so much that when I took a shower the next day, um, like water just went in my <laughs> ear in ways that I haven't experienced before. <laughs> For real. <laughs> and so I was like, uh, something got really cleaned out in there. And I saw that, and I really haven't done it since. I was like, wax is just collecting at the bottom. I was like, has nobody taken a camera to these things? And yeah. We need to see. Like, yeah. Let's take a camera to these things and see. Or just if it's burn one out by or itself. Or yeah, and see if it happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you yeah. guys know that if you have like an ear infection starting, you can take olive oil and garlic, put it in your ear, and it'll kill the infection? How much garlic? I've, d- I've done it a <laughs> lot. <laughs> I've, done, I've done it like. What are you attracting? What are you manifesting to then burrow in your ear? I don't care. By putting food product <laughs> in there. I don't care. <laughs> what, 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 I have <laughs> Italian. I have Italian roots. I already smell like garlic. How much? Yeah, how that's much? not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about cockroaches in my yeah, ear, homie. How much garlic do you put in there? Just like a little tablespoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've done it like five times, and I, I'm like, oh, yeah, are I'm you talking about it. like I've uh, seen the chopped garlic that yeah, already yeah. like yeah. dipped in olive oil and stuff? What yeah. is that called? Um, chopped garlic. Aioli. I think. What was I gonna say? Oh, okay. So I've seen the like the ear doctor mm-hmm. on on TikTok. Yeah, and there was a person that did that, but the olive oil actually started compounding their earwax and stuff. What? And oh. so it just got nasty and it made it harder to clean out their ears. Ooh, interesting. So as much as I <laughs> love that idea, Do you I know probably there's, there's will not. There used to be another theory that you could use urine as well. Oh. Urine. Yep, and I've heard multiple stories from older generations that they would use. They peed urine. in their ear. That you, yeah, they that's a homie. <laughs> that's a homie. If you look at your boy and you're like, hey, <laughs> I got an earache. Can you pee in my ear real quick? That's 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 a that's a whole nother level than, a than whole using whole using level. using pee to cure like jelly stains. intimacy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this is escalated. Way Brings us to today's sponsor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Justin, uh, we appreciate you coming into the studio. Yeah, man. Uh, where can people follow you on socials? Uh, at Seagull Arts is my main account, and then every other derivative is attached there. What's and your website? SiegelArts.com. And you can buy some prints from that website. Visit NashvilleDailyPodcast.com if you want to learn more about Nashville. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nashville Daily Podcast. We also have two other YouTube channels, Explore.Nash and Explore Tennessee. Let us know your best ear cleaning methods in the comments. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.